Hello, my name is Ramin Hujati, and I will be giving an introduction to system Verilog assertions, the essentials of it from a formal verification perspective. The structure of SVA files consists of a module and end module, the inputs which are used in properties and assumptions, and a bind signal at the end. We recommend that the system Verilog assertions be put as part of the design and be ending with SV. And the main reason for that is because such property files can include logic. So let's look at an example of that. So here we have a very simple uh, counter that counts up and down. If the signal up is on, it counts up. If the signal down is on, it counts down. And up has priority over, over down. And we have a little bit of combinational logic. And in here, we're saying that inverted count is equal to the negation of count. So let's look at our property file. And uh, the main thing to notice in here is the structure of it, which you have module and n module. And then we have bind. This is the name of the module we're binding to. This is the name of the SVA module, which is this. And here we're saying that the name of the instance is I1 and this dot star says, connect all of these things to the corresponding signals in the design. And uh, we can also look at the project manager and the project manager contains two files. One is the dot Verilog file and the other one is the dot SV file. Now we're gonna be using the property manager to look at these various properties. So let's get them, let's uh, sort them by line numbers. And uh, here we're looking at our first property file. So we're gonna be covering these constructs of SVA that I consider to be essentials. And let's start with assert property. So this is kind of the simplest property you could write and look at the structure. It says assert property and then parentheses. And then this is a combinational property. There's no temporal or timing constructs in here. And it says that the signal inverted count is equal to the not of count. By the way, notice that we had brought in all of these signals as inputs. So let's try to verify that. Here's the property. Here's how we select it and we're using the auto verify and it verifies just fine. So the next one is this property that has some temporal or timing associated with it. This says that if reset is off, this not reset means reset is off. And if the signal up is on and both of these happen in the same cycle, this is a combinational expression then in the next cycle, this is the next cycle implication. So this happens in T0, this happens in T1. The value of the count in T1 is equal to the value it had in T0, that dollar pass means the previous value, plus one. And we could verify that and that passes as well. Now the next property is identical to the previous one, it's just written a little differently. This is same cycle implication. So this whole right hand size happens in the same cycle as the left hand side. So this says if not reset is on, reset is off, up is on, then in the same cycle, move the time forward by one, now we're in T1, and then verify that again count is equal to its previous value plus one. So the two things we introduced was this construct, which means same cycle implication and this which moves the time forward by one and if we verify, it verifies again. Now the next one brings in the construct disable. So this is used for resets and basically what we're saying here is that don't do any checking if reset happens. Otherwise, if you get two ups and this is one up followed by another up, then in the cycle after that, so this is T0, this is T1, this is T2, the value of count is equal to its value two cycles ago, plus two. And we could verify that. And you could see now we're using dollar pass with another argument, which is how many cycles ago should we look, which is two. And here we're introducing the, repeti the, the repetition operator, which is the same as that. This just says that you get two ups. So in T0, you get an up, in T1, you get an up, and then this property has to hold in T2. So let's verify that, and that verifies. 
Now we're going to be looking at assumptions and this assumption says that if down is on then up in the same cycle is is off and recall that we in our design we had that uh, up has priority over down now we're saying that if down is on we're assuming that up is off and if this was instantiated in some bigger design we could guarantee that so let's go to that uh, to the property we were looking at uh, and it's the next one and here we're saying if we get two downs in a row then the value of count is going to go down by two and the reason this holds is because of this assumption because we know up is going to be off so we could verify that and that passes now sequences can be named here we have a named sequence which means that we're just declaring kind of like a function and this sequence is n ups followed by a down and in here we're using this definition so we're saying that if you get sick one instantiated with three which means that you get three ups followed by a down so this happens over four cycles so t0 through t3 and in t4 we're saying that the value of count is equal to whatever value it had in t0 so you look back four cycles from t4 you're at t0 plus two and the reason for that is we got three ups and a down which gives us a two so if we were to verify mm -hmm. that we will see that it will pass. Now, in addition to sequences being named, properties can also be named. And here we have a name property. And what it says is that if you get n ups, then in Tn, the value of count is equal to go back to T0, whatever count hat plus n. And we could verify that this holds for n being one. So we go to T1 and we look at T0 and that value should be one less than what we currently have. So let's go here, choose this, and that will pass. Now you may wonder whether this one is equal to that one, and it's not. So this one is actually a 32-bit quantity, and this is a subtle point. So this is a 32-bit quantity, then this n becomes a 32-bit quantity. This is a 4-bit quantity. This becomes a 4-bit quantity, and this is a 4-bit quantity. Now, Verilog says that you are going to have to promote these to 32-bit quantities. If we promote these to 32-bit quantities, since this was a 32-bit quantity, now if we get one in here, this is going to add to this. This addition is basically going to be addition of 32-bit quantity values. And then this count is going to be augmented with zero. So we're going to get a bunch of zeros and the 4-bit count quantity in here. So if we were to verify this, what we will see is that it will fail. And the reason for that is because of the value of the counter being 15. So at 15, we're going to go to zero in the design. So at 15, this side is going to become a zero plus augmented with a bunch of zeros. This is going to become a one added to basically 15 and it's going to become 16 as a 32-bit quantity and the two sides are not going to be equal. So this is a subtle point about the way Verilog does operand promotion but I just wanted to demonstrate it in here. And the last property we're going to be looking at is introducing two new concepts. So label, so you can have label for the properties and they show here and they also show up in, in here in the uh, manager for the properties. And then also we have a clock for the property. Now in Solidify, you don't have to specify the clock if the design has single clock domain. And our design does have single clock domain because we are just using one uh, value of the clock. But if you have multiple edges of the clock being used, or if uh, you have multiple clock designs, then you do want to specify the clock of the property. And that's what we've done in here. And we could verify that. Now what we have covered are all of these constructs and we covered assert, assume, bind, current and next cycle implications, sharp, sharp end, so moving forward, having a Boolean end of the left hand side and, and the right hand side after end cycles, repetition, which is moving by end cycles or having a sequence in end cycles, looking in the past by end, disabling, this is for resets, add positives of the clock 
P, this is specifying a clock. For the property, this is declaring sequences and properties and finally labels. Now, what is it that we have not covered? We have not covered these system functions and they do what they say they would. So this counts the value of ones in its argument. This is one hot, so only one of uh, the binary bits should be on. This is uh, one hot zero. They could all be zero or just one bit being on. This is over a two cycle sequence and it says the signal goes up. This is the signal going down and this is the signal staying stable over two cycles. Is unknown is when a signal is unknown and it's usually used for simulation but it can also be used in some tools for formal verification. And is having two uh, sequences hold at the same time from a beginning time and intersect is if those two sequences have the same length and or is one of the sequences being on. This is a variable delay so you get a delay of n to m cycles. This is a sequence holding for at least n cycles or at most m. This is an expression holding within a sequence. This is an expression holding throughout a sequence and these are kind of what I consider intermediate SVA. And finally, kind of advanced or somewhat esoteric SVA are these constructs where we're saying if an expression is true, P holds, otherwise Q, and these are properties. Immediate assertions are combinational. They're inside code and they're context sensitive. So they follow the if then else structure of the code. This is saying that the sequence S is seen N times and perhaps non-consecutively. There could be other stuff going in the middle of them and you match at the end of the last S. So when you see the, the nth S, then you match. This is identical to that, but you match either at the time when you see the last on or any time before you see the next S. This is an unbounded uh, right-hand range. Uh, this is talking about multiple clock properties and in SVA, you could have multiple clocks inside properties and there's the semantics that SVA associates with them. First match is looking for the first match of a sequence. Cover property is usually used uh, for simulation and it says this particular property has to be covered by the simulation uh, signals that you apply to the design. There could be variables inside properties. There could be logic inside property files in the form of either assign statements or always statements. And there could be ended for detecting the end of a sequence. Now, in my opinion, the reference is the language reference manual by IEEE, and that's IEEE 1800-2005, uh, and the section called Assertion. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.